This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. Tonight, we return to our regularly scheduled program, our CVB nemesis, Nancy Carpenter, and how the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation plans to profit off the restoration of the Monroe Crypt. It's been about a week or two since the shenanigans of the Columbus Visitor Bureau's director, Nancy Carpenter, have been on display. We at the Tom Bigby Tales had hoped she had decided to mind her P's and Q's so it, as it was just for Christmas, as we say down here. But like the Grinch, Carpenter can't stand the season without some form of malfeasance and skullduggery. Let's get into it. As you may remember, I reported back in October that the CVB's director has not been renewed beyond March 31st, and she has taken on the position at the Tennessee Williams home as the director of the Columbus Cultural Heritage Foundation, sometimes referred to as the CCHF or the foundation. At a fall board meeting at the CVB, Carpenter announced that there was roughly $25,000 in a fund at the foundation for the Monroe Crypt, a crypt that's historical and lies within Friendship Cemetery, a city cemetery here in Columbus. This was partly from a $10,000 donation from the CVB and a $15,000 in donation from community members and a garden club fundraiser. There is also a 10K grant that's been awarded by the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. So in reality, there's almost $35,000 allotted for the restoration of the crypt. However, I was told by two reliable sources working on the restoration of the crypt that they were told they could only spend $10,900 on the project. In other words, slap repairs up there as cheaply as possible, keep it mostly to what MDAH has promised, and don't worry what it looks like or if it will hold, uh, hold past the spring, because that's all the money available for the job. So where is the remaining $24,000 going that is in a protected account earmarked for the crypts repair and restoration at the foundation? Why is it not being dedicated to the project, and what are the plans for its future use? This brings me back to an earlier episode where we were told by a foundation board member that when asked how Carpenter planned to be paid as director <clears throat> when her salary was clearly not in the current budget for the foundation, Carpenter stated that she, quote, knows how to move money around in a budget to fund things like salaries. Is this where the 24K, not used on the Monroe Crip, but previously earmarked for its use, going to go to her salary? Is this part of the plan to fund her salary going forward? Raid protected accounts? Someone, Sonic Johnson, needs to help keep an eye on the 75K already allegedly in the Dixie Butler donation for the Tennessee Williams art installation. Sonic Johnson is the uh, current vice, uh, excuse me, current treasurer for the foundation. And especially now that Ms. Butler herself is in deteriorating health and unable to watch over the her donation herself, if Carpenter will lie to her own church about her financial abilities to pay her utilities, what will she tell her new board at the foundation in order to accrue the funding to pay her future salary. An interesting aside, Carpenter gave a letter from the foundation board president, Brenda Willis, to the uh, Columbus Visitors Bureau president, Liz Terry, at the last meeting to read. It was a request for $50,000. The president of the foundation, Willis, not the treasurer, Johnson, was requesting one half the designated budget for unfettered use by the foundation. The Columbus Visitors Bureau treasurer, Gwen Brislin, informed the CVB president, Liz Terry, that their responsibility was to reimburse expenses at the foundation and only those expenses that applied to its being used as a visitor center. And he had zero invoices or requests or work orders or anything from the treasurer and had recently had an extensive conversation 
with the treasurer of the foundation regarding the process as well as the actual obligations the CVB has to the foundation. Their obligation, as defined in their bylaws, is to support maintaining the Tennessee Williams Building as a welcome center. That's it. It is not clear how the foundation got in the business of fundraising for community restoration or art installation products. However, since they have put themselves in that position now as a nonprofit, it is their responsibility to adhere to all the guidelines and rules set forth by the state, not the CVB. So let's help the foundation be held accountable for their responsibilities with the money currently in their coffers, showing on their budget as of September 30th, 2023, for the Monroe Crip is $23,845 not including the MDAH grant of $10,000. Contact the, the Columbus Cultural, uh, the CCAF Foundation President, Brenda Willis, at Willis, W-I-L-L-I-S, B-W-66, at AOL.com, and the treasurer, Sonic Johnson, at S-O-N-I-C dot Johnson, J O H N S O N 77 at gmail.com to demand that the people doing the actual work on the crypt, led by Brad Ferguson and his brick masons, get paid for the work they do on this project, not a paltry $10,900. These men started this project in good faith and deserve to be paid fairly for the work they have done already. Carpenter has a long and storied history of not paying for the work done with fair wages while withholding the balance of special accounts to be allocated to herself or other pet projects, leaving behind a wake of underpaid workers and underfunded projects where the workers are forced to cut corners and do substandard work. Our town and our tradespeople deserve better. We cannot let Carpenter move to the Tennessee Williams Building and the foundation where she can run amok misspending grants, ARPA funds, donations, and CVB funding without any form of accountability or fiscal oversight. Without it, financial malfeasance is not just a possibility, it is an inevitability. The writing is already on the wall with the financial stinginess and underwhelm of the Monroe Crypt. If Carol Bogus the doyen at the forefront of the fight for the crypt's preservation and restoration truly cares about this piece of local history. She will demand that the full financial funding of the Monroe Crypt is accounted for and used to fund this project and remove the financial constraints placed on the Masons currently. If not, the results will be slipshod the restoration won't be complete and the resulting mess will fall in the spring when the supporting forms come down. All because someone sat on the extra $25,000 already dedicated to the project. In my part of the nonprofit world, siphoning off designated money is not only fiscally irresponsible, it borders on ethically and legally questionable behaviors. If I were the foundation, the CVB, the city owners of Friendship Cemetery and the Boguses, I'd be darn worried about how this all plays out. If I were the contractor and the Masons currently working on the project, I'd be pissed as hell that funding is there to do a job right, but due to money shelled games, your hands are tied and you can't do anywhere near your best work because you're going under and unfunded. Email that foundation and tell them to do better and to demand accountability for the Crypt Account, and for the MDAH grant. This is Shannon Evans and the Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time.